Pokemon Infinite Fusion is a game where the possibilities of runs are just endless. You can do type runs, certain species runs, double fusions, legendaries, and more. But something I wanted to do was try and beat this game with only shiny Pokemon. Now I'm pretty sure the odds for shiny Pokemon in this game are 1 out of 4,000, but I've since modified this, so now this run won't take me a million years. With this, the shiny should be much more manageable, and I'm okay with that because the main selling point of shinies in these games are how they look when they fuse with other Pokemon. And also, this game doesn't actually use the regular shinies. Nope, they use completely different shinies, and depending on whether you have only one part of the fusion shiny or both Pokemon are shiny will determine the color. The rules are pretty simple. If I find a shiny, I can fuse it with anything I want. The only catch is it has to be one of the 50,000 custom sprites this game has to offer. We obviously can't use potions in battle, and that's pretty much it. So if you guys see a shiny fusion you like in this run, then you absolutely have to subscribe because who doesn't like shiny Pokemon? Especially when they're fusions. Who knows, maybe we'll see shinies who really deserve a reskin. I'm talking to you, Gar. Chomp. But yeah, let's start shiny hunting. So we started with these three as our options. I did end up hunting Pidgeot, but after a while, I actually saved on accident, so I had to start a new save file. And this must have been fate since we had two legendaries in our next save file. I went for Latias, and after some time, there she is. What color will she be? What? I mean, I guess it's a little different, but it didn't change much. Oh well. A shiny is indeed a shiny, especially if it's legendary. This poor swine up is gonna die in Moltres' hot body. Now remember, only one Pokemon needs to be shiny in the fusion, so we can go ahead and find another Pokemon right away, and Togekiss, I think, is a good pick. You'd be surprised how many things don't have cool fusions with the jet legendaries. This is pretty cute though. Oh hey, now we can see who made the sprite. Thanks, Kiwi. I started looking in Route 2 for another shiny, and I was quickly introduced to this. I don't know what's with the yellow and purple shinies, but hey, they don't look half bad, so I can't really complain. For right now, the only thing I could find that fuses well with Vaporeon would be Growlithe. Look at this water pup. Huh, flash fire or water absorb? Probably water absorb. Oh, this is going to be way too easy. See, I fused Latias with Togekiss, and Togekiss gets Aura Sphere, so this shouldn't be too hard. Brock starts off with a Poriwire, but I'm still not worried at all. And Aura Sphere still does half, and this idiot used double team. Ha! Aura Sphere doesn't miss, bucko. And you know what else doesn't miss? The sponsor of today's video. This video is sponsored by Factor, the meal delivery service that you need if you don't like grocery shopping, or if you just don't have time. Or if you're me, then it's just you're antisocial and you don't like going out at all. With all the videos I post, I definitely don't have the time to go to the kitchen every single day and chop up a whole bunch of oink alone for lunch and dinner. So instead, Factor does that for me with these delicious meals. I promise no Pokemon were harmed in the making of this video. These meals are fresh and never frozen and the best part is they come right to your doorstep. All you gotta do is throw one in the microwave for two minutes and it's ready just like that. No prepping beforehand and no mess afterwards. Perfect for those long hours I spent shiny hunting these Pokemon. I mean they have a whole bunch of these meals to choose from so you can't go wrong. I tried their lime chicken with jalapenos and it was absolutely amazing. I mean just look at me scarfing down this chicken. Their smoothies were really good too, and I gotta say my favorite was actually the strawberry. So if you want fresh and ready to go meals any time of the day, head to factor75.com or use the link below and use code justjules50 for 50% 50 off your first factor box. Again, that's factor75.com or use the link down below and use code justjules50 for 50% 50 off your first factor box. Thanks again, Factor, for sponsoring this video. Wait, that could be trouble. Okay, I think we out damage it if it keeps going for Nightshade. Wow, Brock came prepared to be neutral to my fighting move. I'm impressed by his luck. Yo, what is Slack Choke doing? Man looks like Rose in that scene of Titanic. Y you guys know which one I'm talking about. Hey, th don't make me act up, bro. Oh yeah, this is totally what I needed in my life. Jeez, how many good Pokemon are in Mount Moon? Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt here. So that's exactly what I did, and I hunted away. And the shiny I ended up running into was... Swinub. Well, at least he has a cool shiny. You know, I was on my way to go find a war turtle on Route 2 and just randomly found a Blastoise on Route 3. So yeah, my lazy ass doesn't have to go all the way down there and Blastoise gets a nice home in my Pokeball. It, it's a win-win. Blastoise is one of the few Pokemon right now that fuses really good with Mamoswine down the line. Now I say down the line because right now it just looks like this. I'll be honest though, I didn't think it would have a custom sprite for Swinub. So thanks to the creator for this one. Man, a lot of these trainers have some scary fusions. I need to be super careful. Now going up against blue with only three shinies might be a huge mistake, but let's see. Golfion, huh? Well, Blastnub couldn't really do much to this thing with Powdered Snow, so I switched into Gaius, whose Air Slash destroyed this thing. Gravelly came out next, which was great as Aura Sphere made light work of the Rock Kicker, after a wish and a magnitude from his side. Sorry, Blue, but I have Levitate. Aw, be cute is, well, cute, I guess. Too bad Air Slash doesn't care at all. How do you have a Piloswine? This isn't fair. This was honestly Blue's hardest Pokemon, but all he had was Mud Slap, so he couldn't hit us. 
I'm so sorry, Blue. That was kind of cheap of me. All right, what joke do you got for me this video? Which Pokemon has the least fat? I, I don't know, who? Butterfree. <laughs> Get it? Yeah, yeah, I get it. That was a good one. I'll give it to you. You know, last time you screamed at me, though, for leaving you a $1 tip, so here's $2. <laughs> Thanks for being nice this time. A am I getting some kind of tutorial from Jigglypuff right now? Yo, how is Char Sprout going so hard right now? I need to do a run where you guys decide what fusions I should use. So go ahead and start commenting down below. What the literal F is some random doing with this colossal being? You need to chill. I love how Blastnub just destroys this thing and he's just so tiny. Oh, hey, I know you. If you haven't watched our legendary run on the channel, go ahead and do that after this one. Now, Misty is a dragon type trainer and she led this cutie. Since Sogeus is part fairy type, we're immune to any dragon type moves and this includes dragon rage, which I'm assuming this thing has. I do have dragon breath though, so we did half, but Misty to use Roar. Wow, th that was actually smart on her part. Kind of, I mean, I know he doesn't look like much, but Blastnub here is a tough cookie. And it helps that I have Mud Bomb. Yantina? Why do you have two legendaries? Says the guy with one legendary. This is literally Yanmega's paradox form. She did use Supersonic, and of course she didn't miss, and Blasty here wasn't able to snap out of it, so I did have to let the little guy go down. That's so sad. He's just trying to prove himself. Thanks to a big flinch with Air Slash, the battle was over two turns later. Like I said, I got legendaries too, Misty. All right, this was totally random, but wow. I really like shiny Kabutops like this. 10 out of 10 for me. While looking for something to fuse with Kabutops, I found an Arcanine, so instead of waiting for a Firestone, we can get our fully evolved Vaporeon right now. All right, this is definitely a dope sprite. But I gotta be honest, the regular colors fit this fusion way more than a shiny version. So I might have to change this fusion later. All right, this has gotta be referencing something. There's just no way. Wow, Torlax gives me a sense of peace. I don't know how to explain it. Lieutenant Surge this time is a normie, just like Larry, and he has a poor me. Togeus is just good against all these gyms right now. Now, despite me saying this, this thing did not want to die. Aurasphere has 20 PP, and I was left with 7 by the time I defeated the star, because he didn't just have super potions, he had recover, and he was recovering more health than the damage I was doing. Finally, after centuries, Lieutenant Surge accepted that, yeah, I have a legendary, and he does not. Togeton wasn't too hard, just tanky, and with Wish, that was easy. But at least his ace was cute. Points for cuteness, Lieutenant Surge. None of you better say smash to this thing. You'd literally burn your dick. Yo, starter fusions go hard in this game. Let me know if you want a starter only run. You know, it's a good thing we're doing a shiny run, or I have no idea what I'd do in this dark cave. Get it? Because... They're shiny. Shiny kind of means like it's glowing. I'll exit the room now. Guys, I can't figure out what this is, but it's too cool to not include in the video. So please let me know. Okay, Ledian is like the worst Pokemon ever, and I'm sorry for the Ledian slander, but this does make me want to do a run of it. Thoughts? Finally, after years, I think I found something to fuse with Kabutops. See, Kabutops fuses great with a lot of water types, but I already have two, but it's okay because finally a Hitmonlee showed up. All right. I like that a lot. That wasn't the only rock fighting type I was considering though. It's just that Infernape evolves to level 36 and we're not quite there yet. All right, Blue, you're definitely improving, but you're still no match for my team of shinies. This, my friends, is what we call a certified Giga Chad, or in this case, a um, Magiga Chad. Since traveling with Erica in the Celadon sewers lets us essentially double shiny hunt, I decided to do it before we lose access to it, and it took a bit to find, but guess what we ended up running into? It was a Flaffy, and I couldn't be more happier. Also, it's another purple shiny. Now, Erica was pretty scary since she went for Magical Leaf as I air slashed the Sceptile, but thankfully, it did not KO. All that needed to happen next is for Erica to not use Magical Leaf and to not target our fluffy friend. Okay, she hit Sceptile. That was absolutely nerve-wracking. I didn't really know what I was going to fuse with Flaffy, but I decided why not fuse two of our shiny together. And Ampharos actually fuses really good with Latias of all things. Aw, Flaffy looks kind of good too. This is supposed to be red, so blue here is great, but let's see what color it is when we evolve it. Well, actually, what color is shiny Ampharos? Oh, it's actually kind of the same as the original, except way worse. Oh my god, this looks so fucking sick. And that color is just great, man. Screw that ugly purple. For reference, this is the original color. And if you want to see shiny Latias with a regular Ampharos, here's the colors. Still good, but not as great as ours. Yes, finally. Everyone's favorite dark type, Luxray. So if you didn't guess by that Pokemon, Erika's a dark leader and she's scary leading this Spiritomb and Scissor Fusion. Kabuli did do a chunk with Brick Break and it Razor Winded, which to be honest, I figured wouldn't do much. So I just Brick Breaked again to waste her potion. She did have Slash, but I have Battle Armor, so I can't be crit. Weepuff did infatuate us, but thankfully Kabuli ain't no simp and did away with that ugly Puffball. Honestly, her team was a letdown, but it's satisfying watching our kicker kick butt. The trek to Fusion City is always a long one, but it was worth it as our little Blast Nub 
have finally evolved. Oh my god, what happened to you? The good news is I can just teach him ancient power right away with the relearner, and now we can evolve him. Wow, that is an ugly shiny, but I do like the design. But actually, this isn't the design I wanted. No, that would be this reverse fusion. There we go. Mamstois is much better. To be honest, the shiny colors kind of fit him. Ah, who am I kidding? It's horrible and it makes me want to vomit. Get the hell out of Mammal Swine's body. Oh, this is just Mammal Swine shiny. Now, the real reason I unfused them was for this fusion right here. Oh, yeah. That's much better. And the shiny just looks like shiny Arcanine, which I like, and I think most of you definitely will prefer looking at this thing. Shout out to me for having your best interest in mind. So if that doesn't make you subscribe, I don't know what will. Speaking of subscribing, me and RJ are racing to see who can hit 100k first. And obviously it's it's gonna be me, you know, because why wouldn't it? But, but you should totally subscribe to him too. Just do it after you subscribe to me, please. Anyways, this does mean I have to fuse Vaporeon with someone else. And I remember finding a Zapdos next to Celadon but I couldn't find it and I ended up running into this little guy before finding it, a shiny Bulbasaur. The funny thing is, this is the first time I'm seeing Bulbasaur in this route. No, I ran from it. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Finally, I found it again. With this, we can now fuse it with Vaporeon and wow, this looked way better with its original colors. All right, I'll figure out that fusion in a second. But since we're now at the level for Infernape, let's fuse Kabutops with it. Oh yeah. That's definitely the best thing I could find for Kabutops, and it did not disappoint. Okay, now back to that Vaporeon situation. I went to the Safari Zone to find Pokemon and found a Lugia fused with something. The first attempt didn't go so well, but it did stay in the ball on the second attempt, so let's see how this works out. Please don't disappoint, please don't disappoint. Okay, I kind of like it. It's cute. Now, Koga is a flying type master, and I don't think this will be too hard, but seeing this thing just casually floating is really freaking me out. Get down from there. A single Electro Ball did destroy that thing with ease, and then this Delibird was playing with daggers. I needed him to put those things down since I felt threatened, but since he didn't listen, I put him down instead. You're cute, but nah. And just because you have an extra head, doesn't mean jack sh Moving on. I feel like I'm an expert now getting through Silphco since I've played this game like five times already. Oh god, what is that? Put some clothes on, man. Blue, I don't know why you want to fight again. You're just going to have bad fusions once again. Holy crap, that thing looks like a Power Ranger. And clearly, I am super underleveled for blue. Holy shit, relax. You don't gotta bring all the heat out all at once, man. You froze me. Nah, bro, you're cheating. Okay, what did you just pull out of your deck? That's crazy. Okay, thankfully on round two, I'm all leveled up and Discharge got a para on the Mighty Morpher. Eventually he did get paralyzed and Latirnos was able to recover to full. With that, of course, another legendary comes out, this time being Kyotar. Praying it wasn't a ground type, I Discharged, but of course it is. We did, however, get a big para with Dragon Breath and Kyotar did in fact get para hacks. Ha, take that. Now, Latirnos did bite the dust, but Vaporgia was able to clean up. But then, my worst nightmare came out once again. Imagine you're swimming in the ocean, right? And this thing is the only thing you see when you look down into the depths. Just know you're absolutely fucked. Of course, Vaporgia didn't live any of that, but Kabunape did take care of things with that close combat and a mock punch. Good job, buddy. I was really hoping Flare Blitz did more than that, but what can you do? Arcoswine did get close killing this thing, but his good old faithful just couldn't be stopped from the health it was at. <sighs> I definitely need more shinies. I'm a stubborn person though, so I went at it again, this time leaning Arcaswine. It was a great start with Fire Fang two-shotting, but then Kyotar came out and it had Drizzle this time. I did use the rain against him though, and Vaporgia took it out once again. From there, I did sack and I went straight into Kabunape. Let's do this. Ice Beam didn't do half after our Mach Punch, and I was gonna do it again, but just in case I did outspeed, I close combated and I let him KO me. With that, Latinos did the thing. Now for whatever reason, Thrash hits hard on whatever Pokemon is using it, I mean, a Delibird could be using this move and it would still do a ton of damage. So Latinos didn't live very long with Moleswine on the field. With that, it was down to one last Pokemon, Arcaswine. Thankfully, Intimidate lowered his attack and it got confused. We did manage to get rid of the disgusting bird, but Kragius was still left. Yeah, we didn't win. Thankfully, the fight after this did secure us the dub, but man, that was the toughest Blue has ever been at this point in the game. I was talking shit before, but I mean, props to you, Blue. I'm impressed, and he didn't even use potions. Sabrina, however, does use potions and ghost types, which I don't really have an answer for, so I'm going in praying. Luckily, Honchamp is up first, and I so happen to have Aeroblast. Wow, I did not expect that to one-shot. Jolie looked very frightening, so I just let Vapor Gear go down so that Arcaswine could hopefully use Earthquake. That is, if it doesn't have Levitate. Of course it has it, though. We actually didn't even need it as Fire Fang did a ton of damage. I'm really underestimating Arcaswine's attack stat right now. She did flinch on one of her last Dark Pulses, but somehow Arcaswine was able to see it through to her ace. 
Gennape. I knew I just wasn't outspeeding, but Latirnos can totally finish this off with a power gem. That is, if it wasn't a fighting type. Latirnos is a literal god though, so he tanks hits all day, and a couple of dragon pulses finishes that off. Oh wait, she has one more Pokemon. Well, I mean, on top of us being a tank, I also have Recover, so you can't really defeat me now, can you, Sabrina? Not gonna lie though, she did minimize and a Blizzard did a big chunk to us, but Sabrina's just way too much of a wuss to use it again, and Latinos can apparently see the tiniest of objects, so suck it, Sabrina. From here, I did think it was time for another shiny, so I went swimming in Route 19, where there were a lot of good options for Pokemon. Metagross was one of the main ones here, but I really wanted a Snorlax. In the end though, I did get my wish, sort of. We got a shiny Snorky. So now the question was, is this shiny Snorlax or is this shiny Klefki? Well, only one way to find out. Yes, it's shiny Snorlax. Snorlax fuses great with a lot of different Pokemon, but specifically I really love Empoleon because it's the club penguin guy. Beautiful. I also found a shiny Metagross right after, which was great, but I couldn't find too much I liked with it until I found Kingler. How could these two not fuse good together? Oh, he's so based, man. I know I already have a water type, but I couldn't resist it. I do wish we got some different colored shinies. I feel like I've been getting purple and yellow all game. Not that that's bad or anything, but some green would be nice, or white. I mean, we literally have a hint of purple or yellow in every shiny. I mean, this guy's ugly, but at least he's got green. Speaking of ugly, Blaine has this experiment. Blaine has rock types, and five of my Pokemon have super effective moves against them, so this wasn't difficult at all. Unless you're this little guy. How the hell did he live a surf? Now despite this being somewhat easy, I was just mashing A, and Blaine did manage to wipe out a good chunk of my team. Kabunape did take home the W, which thank Arceus, cause that would have been super embarrassing if I had lost. Okay, Rachu fits super well. Look at the little babies! Today is the day that I take that little hat from your stinky little paws, old man. I did lead Empolax for the boss fight, and I brought Surf to hit all three birds at the same time. Empolax is great since she has thick fat for flamethrower and freeze dry, but it doesn't change the fact that all three of them are hitting us at the same time. Once Empolax did bite the dust, I went into Vaporgia since he also has Surf, and one of the birds got a reflect up. Vaporgia was definitely doing more damage with Surf, but it didn't last long as Zapdos went for discharge, KOing our legendary bird. Although Zapdos did take one one of his fellow allies down with him in the process. Luckily, the Tyrannos has Discharge as well, and it did a ton to Articuno, so that was dealt with by the end of that turn. All that was left was for Kabunabe to Stone Age Zapdos, and thankfully, he didn't miss. What a G. Yeah, I definitely lost all respect for the big bad boss, Giovanni. He just doesn't seem like a fairy type master at all. But let him cook, I suppose. Alright, Giovanni, what's for dessert? Snubble. It looks like it's a baby in one of those playthings. Oh, you're in trouble, Giovanni. King Ross just got a big attack boost from Meteor Mash. And another one on his Quilney. And another one on Togachu. King Ross, more like DJ Khaled. Forget letting Giovanni cook. King Ross is making a full five-star meal. This is cool, but die. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get the full sweep as King Ross did get paralyzed on Galvanoir. But man, three boost in one fight with Meteor Mash? I don't think I've ever had that happen. All right, Club Penguin, do your thing. So are, are you gonna give me the hat this time? No. I kid you not, Blue's fight before Victory Road was nothing special at all. Mediocre fusions and King Ross swept his entire team. Come on, man, this is literally fused with Kingler of all things. All right, it's that time of the video, guys, the Elite Four. Lorelai this time is a poison expert, which is random as ever, as Giorino is here. I wish I could tell you guys this was a challenge, but Latirino's bodied everything on her team. Most of them weren't even fully evolved. And then she has the nerve to say, how dare you? What, what do you mean? Go and evolve your Pokemon, lady. It looks like we've got a Rock-type Bruno once again, which I really like. Now, obviously this isn't a Nuzlocke, but to make things fun, if a Pokemon does die here, it'll stay dead unless I black out. Meaning, I can't revive Pokemon in between fights. So Vapor Gear almost died to a wild charge and my heart sank. Luckily, Nosleon missed a big zap cannon on my switch into Empolax. Literally one Swords Dance is all we needed for Clump Penguin to just sit on everybody's face. We flattened his entire team from there. It was actually kind of funny, and my man has no expression. Ooh, ground type Agatha. Pretty cool, as she reminds me of Bertha a lot from Sinnoh. Now remember, I have Levitate on Latirnos, so we should be- What the hell, Agatha? <laughs> that was my pride and joy right there. Why'd you have to go do that? Vaporgia wasn't playing any games against her, as she surfed away at every Pokemon that stepped onto the field. Tsunami for all of you. I don't know how Agatha and I haven't drowned with the amount of water Vapor Geo just spilled for our good friend Latirnos. All right, I don't know how I feel about going into Lance without Latirnos. That was easily my best Pokemon. 
The good news is Lance has fighting type Pokemon and King Ross was my lead, a water and psychic type. It was going well with Zen Headbutt not missing on his first two Pokemon, but then this thing had to land a dynamic punch, confusing us. Knowing he was going to Potion, I went into Vapor Geo once again. Surprisingly, an Aeroblast didn't KO it in one shot, but he did miss a cross shot. I don't know what's going on with this league right now, but none of them have good fusions. I mean, they're all just weird and tiny first stagers. I mean, seriously. Iglilu? Geoli? This is horrible. Blue, on the other hand, was not playing around with Grand Wrath. Our Zen Headbutt did do a ton of damage, but he showed payback, which did a chunk to us. I didn't want to lose King Ross, so I switched into Empolax, who took a critical hit play rough. Ouch. Now, for some reason, he didn't use a potion on our switch in, and instead, the turn after. But the play probably would have stayed the same. We body slammed, and a lucky paralysis was gotten. We did it once more, and then he showed Circle Throw. That was totally unexpected at the time for me. The good news was I was able to waste all of Blue's potions on his very first Pokemon with Vapor Gia using Aeroblast and Extra Sensory. Eventually, Vapor Gia did come out on top, and it looks like Blue is not a follower of his fellow Elite Four brains. This man has a Ho Chomp, a Chomp that's a Ho. I thought this was a great matchup, but then I realized I had no more Surf PP on Vapor Gia, and Extra Sensory did nothing. This is bad. I did recover on a punishment so that I could switch Pokemon here. From there, I swapped in Kabunabe on an Ancient Power, thankfully. I was hoping we'd get a good Stone Edge off, but Sacred Fire happened. We totally got burned, and Stone Edge wasn't even super effective. He did miss a Dragon Rush, but Acrobatics couldn't even do that much. This thing is either Flying Ground or Fire Ground. I did have to let Kabunape go down. Arcoswine was up next, and upon further research, I knew it was Fire Ground. Yeah, I looked it up. So with one Earthquake, we destroyed the Sandbird, Poly Knight. Doesn't seem too scary. Hoping it went for a water type move, I went into Vapor Geo, which if you guys remember, has water absorb. He did end up using Aqua Tail, which was huge since I didn't know if I could take this thing down. All I could do was extra sensory and pray he misses Dragon Rushes, and maybe we'll flinch. Dragon Rush did do a lot, but eventually he went back to using Hyper Voice. I swear, every time I see a Dragonite on the field, it'll use Safeguard one turn, and it did it for one of them. Finally, towards the end, we got a flinch and then a crit, which it didn't matter, of course. But honestly, if we weren't faster there, I don't know if we would have been able to win. By the way, the only reason I have Recover is because that's the TM Giovanni gave us when we won. Otherwise, I don't think we would have gotten the move through level up. So shout out my homie Giovanni. Froligator was out next, and let me guess. Monster Hunter, possibly? I don't know, I've never played the game, I've always wanted to, but it looks sick. Now this thing was no joke since it had my most feared move in this game, Thrash. Luckily, we were pretty bulky, and Recover lets us heal until he was confused. I needed a big hit on this thing, so I used my last Aeroblast, and he then chipped away, which was way better for us than him using Thrash. I tried to go for some flinch confused strats, and one turn he did hit himself, and eventually Vapor Gia came out on top. But let me tell you, Blue did not come to mess around today. Togagon was still here. I healed and then prayed it wasn't a dark type. Its body slam did paralyze us, but we extra sensoried and thank Arceus, it wasn't a dark type. With no PP on any other moves, I gave this thing a headache so bad that it missed the Dragon Rush. Good shit, Vapor Gia. Now I'm not gonna lie, I got pretty lucky with it using work up and missing, and also we never got para hacks. With Vapor Gia finally going down, I go into Arcuswine for a big intimidate drop from the work up. I figure E-Speed is our best bet in case we can't outspeed, but it just didn't do it. And a Dragon Rush nearly KO'd our Mammoth Dog. That was way too close. One more E-Speed and that was out. But guys, there's still one more Pokemon on Blue's team. His starter. And finally, after seeing this thing as a Piloswine and its design really hurting my head, it has finally evolved into a Mamoswine with a custom sprite. Look at it. Now I did hope Arcuswine could outspeed, but it looks like Moltres is the superior Mamoswine fusion. But then it missed the biggest blizzard of its career. Holy crap. Our earthquake ended up doing a chunk. I didn't know if I should e-speed or risk it again. So I did risk it and King Ross is our only hope left. All we need to do is live a move and hit a big crab hammer for the win. As it is quite effective. All right, heat wave. Yes, we lived. Come on, DJ Khaled. Oh my god, what a legend. He freaking hit it. I cannot believe we won that. That was an intense fight, and it all came down to King Ross. Blue, go shiny hunting, man. That's the only way you'll win. Guys, this was super fun just because of the different colors you get from shinies in this game. Like, they're honestly so cool. And on top of that, the colors will change even more when you fuse them together. I love the team we ended up with this time around. I mean, just look at them all in their glory. I do wish we got a little bit more variety in terms of colors. I mean, like I said, they literally all have purple or yellow on them. But the only bad one in my opinion is probably Club Penguin. But let's be real, I just had to use her. 
My favorite has got to be Laternos though for the shiny and the fusion. It's 100% an 11 out of 10 for me. So let me know which one was your favorite and let me know what video you'd like to see from me next. Drop any suggestions down below in the comments. Anyways, I love you guys. Bye.